Well, Pat Monahan, it is good to see you again, my friend. And uh, I feel like uh, we get to hang out every couple months. And if that's okay with you, I'd like to keep that schedule going, if that's all right. I love it, Jeff. Yep. It's always good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. Uh, loving AM Gold on the radio. And uh, it was one of those, the first time that, uh, that your guys played it for me, I thought, Hey, look at that. It may have been five years since we heard a brand new train song, but it's, it's like classic train, but also got a little retro feel and just immediately sounded good on the radio, man. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. The whole album is, uh, you know, you're too young to know, but they used to make these compilation records called AM gold and, uh, you know about them. I know about, I was just, I was, I wish I had one back here. Cause yeah. as soon as I saw the title, I'm like, Oh, I know exactly what that is. So, yeah. So the whole album is like a throwback and, it's like a com a compilation of uh, of like yacht rock meets you know disco meets uh, R and B and the whole album is kind of like that and that's why I thought that this would be a good time to finally tour with our friends Jewel and Blues Traveler we've known each other for you know twenty some years and uh, with this kind of throwback album maybe have a throwback tour and join each other on stage every night and it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, what a great tour, and we're so excited. It is, uh, it's obviously all over the place, um, and we're looking forward to hopefully, I, I got a chance to see you last summer, and, um, you know, 20th anniversary of Drops of Jupiter, which, which has to kind of blow your mind, uh, but man, what a killer show that was last summer. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to be able to go out. We did 25 shows and thought that every one of them would get canceled, and none of them did, and uh, while we were out, so many tours were going away and uh, we were just holding our breath, hoping that people were going to show up and they did. It was a, a full house every night and uh, people had a good time. And I think this year will just be a bigger, better extension of that. Yeah. And I think you, you hit it on the head because you guys went out like exactly at the right time because yeah. it was, I think it was like August ish or whatever. So I think the first, so the first live show I saw was in July, mm -hmm. and, like end of July. And so there was this euphoric feeling, right? At the end yep. of July, like we're back, we're out, we're seeing live shows. And a couple of weeks later, I saw you guys. I was like, this is great. Everything's back. And then it just wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. I think this summer is going to be a lot different. I think uh, things have uh, really mellowed out and people are feeling safer and happier. And, uh, and I think that the realization of live music being as important as it is to humans. And, uh, you know, last, last week I was, uh, referring to like Tom Petty and Prince. And, you know, I was telling people like, if you're not going to go see train and jewel and blues traveler, go see somebody. Uh, and yeah. then, and then Taylor, uh, you know, Pat passed away this weekend. So the blues, uh, the whole idea with uh, the Foo Fighters and, you know, you never know, when you'll be able to see your favorite things again so you know go see them uh it's uh it's it's moving it's a human necess uh, necessity totally agree with you pat and speaking of which uh taylor hawkins uh obviously we were all shocked over the weekend to learn of his passing at 50 uh did you have a lot of uh occasions to uh, to run with the foo fighters no i didn't uh you know i i've met dave grohl several times he played uh drums with us at the Howard Stern birthday party years ago. And, uh, but I never got a chance to hang out with Taylor, but I heard, hear nothing but great things about him. Yeah, certainly a lot of people are, are sharing the love, uh, on his passing. So back to the, um, back to the tour, which is fantastic. Uh, I mean, when I first saw train jewel blues traveler, you're like, Oh man, it's just going to be a, a night of greatest hits. And, uh, and you know, it's been a long time and I, I've thankfully seen you guys a few times over the recent years, but I can't remember the last time I saw Jewel and, and Blues Traveler. And so you guys have known each other for a long time. Yeah. I mean, you know, Jewel and, and Train are managed by uh, Crush Music. And so it's it was easy and fun to connect and sing on each other's albums. But also, you know, in the world of music, uh, you find quickly who the people are that you can hang with. And uh, they're easy. Like they're easy to be around or they they don't, it's not a bunch of drama. And, and so it's just going to be a fun tour. And in fact, you know, Jules only question to me, she texted me like a month and a half ago, are there going to be any kids out on tour? And I was like, yeah, my kids come out and other people. And she's like, <laughs> awesome. And that's all she cared about. Like, that's, that's a pretty great question. Yeah. That's a really great question. How old are your kids? 
Uh, I have four kids. There, I have two older ones that are 28 and 25, and uh, or 20, 29 and 24. And then I have a 13 year old and a 10 year old. Nice. So they're keeping you young, right? Yeah. How about you? Uh, 26 next week and 22. Nice. About to wait, college in uh, three weeks. They're keeping you old. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're keeping my bank account old. Well, actually, yeah. I should say my oldest one just got married a couple of years ago, actually. So she, uh, she and her her husband are doing really well. But yeah, my cool. My my twenty two year old graduates from Grand Canyon University out in Phoenix in a couple of weeks. And oh, that sounds fun. That's a good place yeah. to go. R- really neat place. We vacationed out there for like ten years. So <clears throat> it's uh, such a great place. We fell in love with it, and she wanted to go back out there to school. So hmm. from Ohio to Phoenix is kind of a, a little bit of a weather upgrade. It's a weather change for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. Hey, the, with all the, uh, I wanted to ask you, you, you're still in San Francisco. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I live in Washington state. My wife is from the Seattle area. Okay. All right. So do you guys typically, when people think of train, they think of you being, you know, from San Francisco, although I know you're from PA. So would you describe yourself as a mainly a San Francisco band these days or? Oh yeah. We're a San Francisco band always. And, yeah. uh, that's where my heart is. And that's where our foundation family house, uh, where we donate all of our, you know, f- proceeds from our wine industry that we have called uh, save me San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, we started making wine just to like give, uh, you know, a taste of San Francisco to train fans and uh, millions of bottles later and uh, family house has grown from, you know, 12 rooms to 80 rooms that wow. are full every day with uh, families that really need their help. That is amazing. I I, I love hearing, uh, especially something that started as just like a fun little idea turned into something so cool for, for people watching and listening, how, how can folks learn more information about, about that organization? Oh, you can just Google family house, but you know, if I were you, um, you can look into your own, um, uh, your own region or your own community. Every, Every community has something like it. Uh, it's it's kind of the foundation of like the Ronald McDonald House, which oh, yeah. which houses you know uh, lower income families whose children need uh, need help because they're they're they have to go to a certain city to get the right kind of care. And yeah. San Francisco uh, UCSF Hospital is very well known for for children uh, that are that are having uh, brain issues. Well, really cool that you do that. And and you actually inadvertently helped one of our local charities here too, because you, uh, you signed one of your bottles of Save Me San Francisco um, several years ago, and we were able to auction that off uh, for, for breast cancer here locally. So thank well, you for great. doing that great. as well. It was very tempting to not auction it off. I know the staff was wanting to really try to kind of keep it to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we'll send you some wine. Okay. Uh, and then you can auction that off to yourselves and drink it. <laughs> I love it. All right, Pat Monahan. I want to I, a couple more things here. We'll let you go. When you were here last year, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. You said, and uh, we're going to introduce our guitar player, and he's from Dayton. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then everybody said, oh, I bet they say that in, in every city they go to. They say he's from you know whatever city or whatever. Yeah, I say it in every city. <laughs> and here's why I say it in every city because it's funny. And here's the best part that happens. I love it. <laughs> the next day in the paper, when uh, some sometimes I never read press because I, I at this point, I don't care there. You, you can't hurt me any more than you already have. It's already fine. Right. right. But now people will be like, hey, so, you know, they were in Toledo and we're still, tr- you know, we're still looking into this guitar player. We haven't found out exactly what high school he went to. But, you know, and that, that's the best part of all of it is that it ends up in the paper the next day. Yes. Well, believe me, I was, I was just so you know, I had your back because I'm like, that's Pat Monahan. If he says he's from Dayton, then I believe he's from Dayton. So that's just, right. Thank you. Leave alone. So I, I only had- lie a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. And thank you for fessing up. You could have easily dodged that one and you went right for it. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's kind of the, it's the, uh, it's the old gag now it's uh, yeah. if, if, I, if I introduce him from where he's really from, it's like, Oh, who cares? Right. Right. He's very good. By the way, you have a fantastic band. And like I said, I, I enjoyed the show so much last year and 
I'm sure that, uh, that this summer is going to be awesome as well. And, and I can't wait to hear the whole new album, which by the way, comes out here in just a few weeks, right? May 20th. Yep. May 20th. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I think train fans are really going to be happy with this one. Yeah. So how is this different? Uh, last question. How is this different coming out of the pandemic? Everybody's kind of had this, you know, wave of emotion and, you know, we've, lost family members and we've been isolated for so long. What, what was the, what was going through your mind when you were writing this one? Well, you know, I, uh, I was asked by a, a certain train fan that has known me for a long time to uh, get back to writing sad songs. Cause not everybody's as happy as me. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I took that to heart. That meant, that meant a lot to me. And so there's plenty of sad on this record and uh, it just, it's never without hope, but but there's a lot of reminiscing about, uh, you know, what it's like to not be wanted or not be loved. And that's, you know, the idea of A.M. Gold, the song is uh, it, it's a it's an age old problem that, you know, even I still uh, struggle with, which is self-love. Um, so I think that the whole record has a lot of emotion to it and uh, and a lot of different stories of truth of my life. And and I think that. Uh, that woman is going to really be happy with these sad songs. I know that. Hmm. Well, I saw you uh, quoted sometimes saying, you know, writing songs is hard. And I think for those of us, I've been blessed to play your songs on the radio for over 20 years now and, and have, have enjoyed, you know, all the way back to drops of Jupiter and meet Virginia and save me San Francisco and Hey soul sister and calling all angels and, you know, 50, 50, uh, 50 ways, by the way, which, <laughs> continues to be i'll never ever learn this the words to that song just when i think i've got it right i, I i'm doing the verse before or the chorus before or whatever but uh anyway such such great songwriting it, it it is hard to write a song and yet you have done this successfully for so long most bands you know have a hard time getting their first song even played on the radio let alone having a 20 plus year career so uh well, obviously you've had some amazing inspiration but amazing ability to be able to put that into something that we all like and listen to on the radio. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. That's a, that's a hard thing. It's hard to, I mean, look, there's real hard things to do in life and uh, this is not in that category, but when it comes to uh, I just remember asking or, or kind of complaining about this 20 years ago to a producer, I was like, man, writing great songs. This is so like writing songs that people care about is so hard. And he said, that's why not everybody does it. <laughs> and that was as simple as that. Yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty good advice right there. I'd say that's, that's a solid way to, to look at it, but uh, you've done it successfully. We're so glad you're still out doing it. And well, thanks Me too. To you guys and jewel and blues traveler AM gold comes out on May 20th, but of course you can hear it all over the radio right now on mix mix one Oh seven, seven and many other stations across the country. And we're glad you're back, Pat, that is for sure. And we look forward to seeing train this summer, buddy. Thanks Jeff. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing you and sharing that wine. <laughs> You got you got a deal on that one.